Once upon a time, we saw into the woods. We saw into the woods. Indeed, we did. Damn it, you're supposed to say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm completely useless now. <laughs> Uh, so yes, we saw Into the Woods, and uh, I have never seen any of the plays, I've never seen any other versions of it, so I didn't know what to think going into the film, but uh, I have to say I did really enjoy this. Disney knows their fairy tales, uh, I've seen pretty much all the regular adaptations of the fairy tales in question, and uh, I think this is a very interesting version. And uh, there, there are some points that we'll get into. Yes. Yeah, so what, did, what did you guys think? Yeah, well, both Kat and I have been in productions of Into the Woods yep. prior. So mm -hmm. we had, uh, you know, we had things that An abundance we were looking of for. And yeah, <laughs> obviously, we, you know, things were cut for time. So it would, we kind of you know, missed some of it. But, you know, other than that, as I was saying to Dave earlier, I have as many bad things to say about it as I have good things to say about it. And it's not very often I can say that about adaptations, because usually I have more bad things. He's a very critical person. Yeah. He's not very British, though. No. <laughs> but yeah, I thought a lot of the changes that they made to it uh, were actually pretty good. I, I thought... There were some really, really great things about this movie, especially uh, Agony. Agony was probably the best part Agony. of the whole movie. Right. <laughs> oh my god, that was yeah. the, that was the best scene in the movie. Yes. That was so glorious, just seeing Chris mm -hmm. Pine just hamming it up. Mm -hmm. It was oh god, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now I think for most people who are familiar with uh, Into the Woods, the play, uh, they know that it's it's a show in two acts, and it's kind of, it, it's two things. It is a major crossover of all fairy tales, and a lot of them already in the Disney universe, too, uh, and uh, it is, like I said, two shows. That said, the second half is sort of what happens after uh, Happily Ever After? Which is rather interesting yeah. because Disney Disney usually deals with the now. They always mm -hmm. have the happy ending. And this kind of plays with what they're doing lately. Mm -hmm. They've been changing up their formula. They've been much more self-aware. Uh, films like The Emperor's New Groove, Frozen, and this showcase them making fun of their own tropes. And while the Into the Woods is is an older play, and but for them to adapt it and to poke fun at themselves in the same way, especially with the agony sequence where they have the <laughs> the superficial princes basically act superficial and they kick water and they act you know, like they're in agony because the girls, yeah. you know, are are out of their reach. Uh, it, it basically it it still ties into all that. Disney's been doing lately with sort of defying convention. Mm -hmm. And Agony's the white privilege. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a as a person who doesn't know the original source material, um, I mean, I I always know that there's going to be a certain difference in adaptations, but Disney has been no stranger to adaptations, and they usually change the source material a lot to make it less dark than the original source material. I will praise them on the fact that they really went there with a lot of these dark themes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they showcase the crow, uh, the, the birds pecking out the evil stepsister's eyes. They, they <laughs> Actually, I don't think they showed that. Well, they, they don't show it, but they... they but they did. They, they basically... They did imply it, yeah. They, they basically tell us that it happens, and they, mm -hmm. they show them blind... They show uh, toes and heels getting cut off. Like, in, in any normal, like, old-school Disney production, they would not do that. Nope. <laughs> and so a lot of the darker themes present uh, are, are more daring, and for that I really commend them. And, you know, I, a lot of fans of the original, I would, I would imagine, would be upset with that, but I, I really praise Disney for going the extra mile to 
to do that. Though to be fair, they don't really showcase or even say the word death. They they don't they, oh, they say they they say mm. she died they mm. say they, they yeah. kind of skirt around death yes. a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I I think Disney is still a little bit uh, adam to, adamant to try to imply death rather than show death, and that that could be considered a fault. But I I do think mm. that um, it, it's Disney. Yeah, I think. They are trying to keep it. They're they're doing they're doing this delicate tightrope walk where they have to both please the fans, but also remember that this is for children somewhat. So basically, everyone so, dies of Bambi's mom. Dad. Yeah, <laughs> uh, honestly, in, in a way, yeah. Off screen, but effective. C compared but, to like uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, which is probably the darkest that Disney has pushed the envelope up up until that point. Like this goes further, I, I would I would say in certain aspects, and so, um, I mean it's not perfect in that regard. I think Disney could go darker. Disney could push the envelope more, mm -hmm. but this is definitely them trying to do something a little bit more. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, personally, I thought it was a real admirable attempt that they did, because like I was so afraid when they were when they said they were doing it to the woods, so I'm thinking, okay, on the one hand, this is a good thing because this is fairy tale, and that's, that's Disney's forte. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, though, you know, there, this is this is not an easy play to adapt. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like Chicago in that sense, where, again, it's a very difficult play that has a lot of soliloquies, a lot of, you know, moments where characters sort of interact, but they don't, and... It's Sondheim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's Sondheim. And Sondheim is Sondheim really hard to pull complex. off. complex. Yeah, but they actually, did, in, yeah. they actually did a really good job, and I'm glad to see that they didn't just try to make it a Broadway show and they're just filming it. They mm -hmm. actually, like, use the medium of, you know, the movie to, like, show different scenes while they're yeah. singing. So, I felt that was actually very strong that we actually get to see, you know, the actual scene, the actual mm -hmm. set places, pieces. Yeah, yeah. the sets, instead of, you know, so like a lot of like where they're like yeah. this close and you can like, and just singing yeah. and you can see like their nose hairs and everything. Yeah. Not only <laughs> that, but they cast every actor who could sing in this. Mm -hmm. There was no Javert's, there was, you know, like, yeah. like, like, granted, I think Johnny Depp had a couple moments where he went off key. But that's just a nitpick. Honestly, I. Speaking of Johnny Depp, I think Johnny Depp's character. Uh, what worked about him was he was understated. This this is a character who, you know, Johnny Depp could have handed up more because Johnny Depp has his Johnny mm -hmm. Depp isms. But he, unless he kept you were looking for him, mm -hmm. you didn't notice that he was Johnny Depp as much. And. I think he did a great job as the wolf, uh, personally. Mm -hmm. I thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. Although, again, I his singing to me was not that good. Like, he tried to sing in the lower octave, and if you listen to, like, the soundtrack, or it, it's kind of jarring in a way, because then everybody has to go down an octave, and it's, you know, a bit weird. Mm -hmm. But then again, <laughs> his part was shorter. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it wasn't a bad performance. Performance no, in, in not that by any stretch. He of the was more talk singing. Yeah, he was like a pimp. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> he was all decked out in furs and stuff, and he had like stuff under his jacket. <laughs> Personally, I I like this a little bit better than what I saw the Broadway play look of of him as the wolf, because when when I imagine like a magical setting, a wolf like he's trying to seduce a girl. He's not gonna be a full wolf form. Like he showcases his tail and a little bit of his ears. But he wants to have an appealing appearance to try to lure them into a false sense of security. I would be seduced by Johnny Depp in a kid <laughs> outfit. I do admit. <laughs> so I mean, I don't know how accurate it is, but I, I think Johnny Depp turned in a good performance. Chris Pine. Oh my God, Chris, Chris Pine. Pine! Oh my God, he was the best he thing about this just... movie. He was hilarious. The irony is that. Uh, Chris Pine, uh, it's Chris Pine's part that's also in the play supposed to be doubled with the wolves. So yeah, it kind of, the, the, the humor of both characters is kind of 
there. But, but I do think yeah. it, it I, I can see where you're going from yeah. because there's definitely a part in the film where uh, Chris Pine's character seduces another character like the wolf in that that symbolism um, is a little bit lost there. But I think what works about this is they want to show that Chris Pine is an airhead prince. He, he's mm -hmm. out to be charming, not sincere. He's mm -hmm. he's the trophy prince. He's there to look pretty and to act pretty. He's not out to slay the, the monsters. They really showcase that mm -hmm. well here. Um, whereas his brother, well, still kind of a superficial prince, and they make fun of that a little bit, he kind of has a journey. Um, where in this film, he has more of a, a, a character change because he's blinded, and at the end, he has... Uh, his princess. I don't. I know you said there's something that would ruin that for me, but yeah. yeah. But in this film version, I think that his character did have more of a journey than his brother. He's more mm -hmm. sympathetic. Let's yeah. put it that way. More mm -hmm. sympathetic than Cinderella's prince. Mm -hmm. Although I gotta say, like, just on Chris Pine for a moment. Um, it's just my personal opinion, but like, his singing to me was a bit off. It wasn't horrible. It's just you can obviously tell, like, he. He wasn't comfortable he, with it. He, he wasn't comfortable. He no. was like, he, it's kind of like when you see a singer for the first time and they make those weird faces trying to project. Because, mm -hmm. like, he, his face was like all of these, like, and like. But once again, <laughs> to be fair, it is Sondheim. Right. And I think it fits the character a little bit. Like, again, it is, you know, I, I did notice that, but I was I was more attracted to his performance mm. in that He was that channeling song. Captain Kirk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when when you have two people, you know, two princes talking about how they're in agony over these princesses, <laughs> they're kicking water, they're ripping o open their shirt, they're mugging every <laughs> single thing. I think that's the point. And, and yeah. you know, yes, some of it is, uh, you know, a little bit too much when you're talking about the facial expressions, but I think it fits. But it makes it makes it, it that makes much better. better. Yeah, funny, it makes the, it that the, much the better. The funny thing is, if you put the if you put that scene on mute, it looks like they're shooting a commercial for Calvin Klein. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm worth it. That's L'Oreal. Um, <laughs> well, I'm always worth it. You're completely useless now. Punch. <laughs> um, speaking of which, uh, the baker. The baker was okay. I I, I like the baker, um, mostly because I know his character from Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. I know you didn't see that. Oh yet. no, I saw that part. Oh, you did see. He's that. the lodger, and I like the lodger. Right. He was in two episodes. I didn't see the second episode of the. Right. Lodger. The second one is what really makes it fit because mm -hmm. he has a baby in that episode. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's what really makes him fit for me. I thought he was pretty well done. Yeah. He looked the part. He was a decent singer. He, he was a good actor. I, I will say, though, that he was probably the weakest for me in terms of singing because they, uh, his the, there were parts where he did get to shine but I think a lot of it was more him contrasting with his wife. Mm -hmm. And so he was more a softer... Something yeah. Cool. To be honest, he's supposed to be. Mm. Like, it's yeah. not like the princes where they're supposed to be regal and have these regal voices or anything. He's just a mm. simple va baker, and so and yeah. a lot of the time when and he's, he's just kind of thrust into this, you know, quest he has to do, and he's you know got to meet all these people. And to be fair, like yeah. a lot of his songs, he's usually singing with his wife or somebody else. He only gets like that mm -hmm. one song, and even then they cut that out of the movie. What I like about his character is he kind of represents a lot of the audience. Is like he's just kind of saying this. This is too much. Why? Why do we need to go to such lengths just to have a child? And you know he has a lot of daddy issues because his you know his mother died, his father abandoned him, and he has to deal a lot with that. And so he's trying not to be his father, but at the same time, a lot of it, his running away is making him become his father. And so he, he's he's a deep character, but they understated him. Mm -hmm. As I figured they would, because he's kind of the everyman. Yeah, you know? he is. He is the everyman character. Um, I do think he he lends a lot of humanity to it, a lot of a lot of level headedness mm -hmm. to a world that is not level headed. Yeah, I think I think the the baker is kind of like the the Doug or the Arnold uh, of uh, of you know the show where. Basically, you're kind of seeing the world through his eyes. You're kind. Of, he's just sort of like the straight man, and he's seeing all the chaos around him. So you're you're just sort of, sort of viewing it through his eyes. And I mean, I, I feel kind of bad for the guy because he is the one character who 
doesn't instigate the things that happen in the film. No. Because people, people blame him for stuff. He didn't do anything. It's just he's trying to undo what his father did. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you know the show, then you know that the blame is not what is really important. The, the blame isn't what is important. No. It, it's, it doesn't matter who's right. It, mm -hmm. Because if you look at any person in this film, including the witch, they all have their intentions. They have mm -hmm. very good intentions. They're trying to do something specific. They were wronged by someone. And they, they, they eventually blows up in their faces. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, nobody is wrong, nobody is right, everyone yeah. has a very different outlook on what goes on. Yeah. And if you look at it in different ways, like, these people could be very horrible people, or they could be just good people who were led astray, and I, I like that about them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, my, the, the first time I was into the, in, into the woods, uh, my director said of the witch that she is probably the worst, you know, the, the most evil heinous character but she's right yeah everything she says is you know it's correct although she I, I do not agree with her about the Rapunzel aspect no but I, I'm talking about you know a lot of the advice that she gives mm -hmm. a lot of the things that she says she's the only one that's saying truth she's the only one that's being completely blunt and sincere and she's just like, you yeah. know, your father did this. Yeah. I didn't ask for any of this. Mm -hmm. And my mother was kind of a, a, a bad person, and mm -hmm. she did this to me too. I want to undo it. Mm -hmm. You help me undo it. And, you know, she, she wants the things that she, she lost. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the, the biggest undoing for her was her own acquisition mm -hmm. of the child and the fact that she tried to hinder it and protect it to such a degree, if she had just let herself stay as she was and let her child be her child and not obsess over becoming young again, mm. then maybe things would be a little bit different. But I cannot deny that she's right in a lot of things mm. that she's saying. <laughs> yeah, so, and uh, I guess in terms of the other characters, I mean, like we said, everyone else did a really good job. Mm -hmm. I really like Cinderella. She had a really mm -hmm. nice voice. Mm -hmm. Um, I really like Jack. He's the same kid that played Gavroche in Les Mis, and he yeah. has a voice on him. Mm -hmm. he, he's perfectly cast, because mm -hmm. the moment he starts singing the Jack and the Beanstalk song, like, and talking about his journey, like, I'm just like, this kid, like, th this kid is adventurous. Mm -hmm. He's, he is Jack. Like, I, I like how he portrayed the wide-eyed wonder of the character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was in the song, I was, like, engulfed mm -hmm. in, like, just, like, mm -hmm. joy, like, and just, like, listening to him talking about, like, cr you know, climbing up a beanstalk and being above the clouds. And, and the fact like, that they've got him, you know, acting it out, that they've got him climbing the tree while he's singing the song, I felt was a great direction to go in. The Is choreography it? in general. Yeah. It's just a shame that his character is kind of despicable. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that he keeps stealing shit and justifying uh. it by saying, oh, but I'm poor. It's like, that well, gives you no to right. Well, be fair. <laughs> well, another thing, you know, he's trying to buy back Milky White, his cow. He's, he's all doing it for Milky, but at the yeah. same time, he he's doing it to help out his family. Yes. He The that only time he does something despicable is the third time he really goes up the beanstalk because he's, he's challenged. He's challenged to steal mm -hmm. something that he didn't need to steal. Mm -hmm. Or, no, he's not, he, he's actually, when you think about it, he's not actually challenged, he just thinks he's being challenged. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, you could always, it's the whole ID double dare you. Type yeah, thing. It's, it's a whole child, you know, childish thing. <laughs> to be fair, when he's paired against mm -hmm. Red Riding Hood, which she was a good character, but at the same time, you can see that there's a twinge of annoyance in just about every line sometimes, because she's a child, she doesn't know as much, she mm -hmm. doesn't really know better, and it doesn't really feel like her parents are really giving her enough guidance. No. Mm -hmm. um, but she, she she's always led astray, and she always kind of has a little bit of a bratty air to her. Not all the time, but she has a little bit of a... I don't know enough, but I'm not going to try to find out. 
Well, that's how kids are. Yeah. Yes. It's like, yes, I yes, I don't know about this, but I'm not willing to admit it. <laughs> I'm not saying it was bad. I think she was a very interesting character, and I never found her her scenes annoying. Um, I always I enjoyed her singing. I enjoyed it greatly, but I I think that they were trying to showcase more of her as a child than Gavros. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, considering Jack's basically the man of the house and yeah. has all his own responsibilities. You know, Red Riding Hood is like the prodigal child of the film, so... Uh, Jack is more the wide-eyed, wondrous adventurer, where she's just carefree skipping through the woods. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they, they work very opposite of each other in that regard, and that's why they, you know, when they came together at one point in the film, is when things started to go downhill a little bit for them. And, uh... I mean, Lisa, said there's so many there's good There's so many characters. There's a lot. Um, Meryl yeah. Streep did a great job. As, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, she always does a great job. It's Meryl Streep. <laughs> um, I, I like... they. You were talking earlier about how there's a little twinge of youth to her still. Yeah, I didn't... I thought that her makeup, like, they could have made her look a little older, a little uglier, because, like... Meryl Streep, of course, is getting on in years, so I guess it didn't take that much to make her older, but I felt like they could have, because considering that she turns young later on, and she kind of looks the way she does now, like, it, like even with the makeup, she still looks, you know, to be like maybe 40, 50 at the youngest. I feel like they could have either tried to make her really young or make her, like, really old and hideous just to contrast with her later appearance. I, that's how it is in the play that I've seen. Like usually they have like the witch in the play wear like a mask or something or a fake nose and fingers and everything. So I mean, she had the fingers. She had a lot of the wrinkles and the the mm -hmm. crazy hair. Um, personally, I'm going to disagree a little bit on that. I liked that there was a little bit of youth about her because when you really want to torture someone about how much they lost, keep a little bit of it left. She can always look in the mirror and see like, oh, I have a little bit of it, but I still have all this stuff that I don't like. And I, I, don't, e I don't even know if she saw how, how young she kind of looked in herself. Like someone who's gone that crazy after all that e the years of being cursed, you know, they probably just still think that society would look at them in a negative light. Well, I think it's also that she feels, well, there's another character, uh, Rapunzel, who she is essentially playing a surrogate mother to, and uh, uh, she feels like uh, Rapunzel's very resentful of her, and feels, you know, she says, oh, I am old, I am ugly, I embarrass you, you are ashamed of me. And, you know, I, I guess didn't understand feels, that, to be honest. I, I feel like, the play, I didn't understand know, that. I guess, I guess if, you, if you think about it, it's sort of like, she wants to be maybe more than a mother to her. That's disturbing. Exactly. But she's also project projecting her own insecurities on her children, mm -hmm. which parents often do. Um, yeah. I will say that they could have gone a little bit more with the makeup. I will, I will mm -hmm. admit to that. But I think what we got was, was enough for my taste. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, like I said, it's just based on what I've seen of other shows. So. Mm -hmm. It's it was better than Beastly, because because it's it's not just a scar and and bald hair. Mm -hmm. You know, they actually took time and effort into making them look the way they did. Oh no, I'm a punk rocker now. I'm hideous. I'm completely useless now, because <laughs> I have a scar. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, from the perspective of someone who hasn't seen the original, I think this was extremely well handled. I've heard other people's perspectives of how they think the second half is weaker than the first half. I think it was different than the first half, and, and, and I think it, 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 people might not be used to fairy tales not having the happiest of endings, but... From what I saw, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed a lot of it. Um, was it perfect? No. I think it beats Les Mis any day mm, because definitely. everyone could sing. The cinematography was wonderful. Mm -hmm. The effects 
didn't look CGI. The effects were really well done. Yeah, I mean, you still have the obviously fake hints here and there, but it didn't like take you out of the story or yeah. anything. Although I will say, I mean, as I was saying earlier about you know the second half, mm -hmm. um, the, the 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 real issue I take with it is because they cut it for time. And I feel like the second half is the show, in my opinion, and probably a lot of other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that they were so desperate to cut it for time, they really kind of rushed the second half. Mm -hmm. And there's really one instance uh, where, you know, it, it's sort of where the baker gets, sort of, he gets fed up. And it's kind of resolved way too quickly. There were there were a couple yeah. parts in the second half, and I, yeah. I see exactly where that were yeah. rushed. Um, there were a couple deaths that happened a little bit too quickly. That you know, while I could yeah. see these characters mourning them, and I did feel for them, it wasn't like an emotionless well, thing. Um, I will say, as as you were mentioning earlier, that they seem to be skirting the death issue. Mm. That that does kind of come into play in that. They kind of don't make it clear enough. Mm -hmm. Not they, until they mention it yeah, later. They mention it later, and I think what would have worked better is if they. They're probably going to have an extended version with. Like, I really more, hope yeah. so. I, I hope there's I more really, of an extended version where these deaths are, instead of yeah. just being cutaways, they're more expanded upon. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean. Of course, there is that song, like you mentioned, the song No More, which really is, like, is the moment where the baker realizes he's about to become his mm -hmm. father, and he wants to end that cycle, and decides to, like, return to his group. So I really do wish they had left that in. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that long a song. No, they but added... it's, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very powerful. It, it needed that extra push. Yeah. And the scene with his father is good. Mm -hmm. That would have the ending song would have pushed it further. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it would have turned something great into something even better. You know, mm -hmm. and um, I, I again, I think this is a great film. I don't think this is the best no. Disney film I've ever seen, but I but th I think it's the best one in recent memory. Yeah, it's definitely I think the best adaptation of a mu of a stage musical to movie that I have seen in a great while. Yeah, it's in my top three yeah. Disney films for this year, definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's about on par with Saving Mr. Banks for me, mm. because that, that had its own adaptation problems too, and that had uh, you know some, some issues that I didn't like about it, but I, I, I thought it was a great film um, that not everyone will enjoy. And the, Into the Woods is kind of the same way where mm. I don't think everyone is going to get into it, but I think a lot of people can appreciate it. Frankly, I'm surprised the audience we sat with was able to sit through it. Oh, there was like a lot of kids and teenagers there. We even had someone like in front of us whip out their phone at one point and was like playing virtual chess. Ironically, <laughs> the one person who had their phone out who was extremely distracting was an adult. Mm -hmm. it, it, and I'm just like... Like, asshole, really? He was by, in, in the film by himself, and then he moved to the front, and then he moved back, because I guess he didn't want to strain his neck or whatever. But just don't, just go out of the film. Like, yeah. just have the courtesy for the moviegoers, because but, there's a lot of film, the parts of the second half mm -hmm. of the film that are darker, that you need that lack of light to really take in. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was like two minutes where I was just like, at least, enough. At yeah. least it wasn't like the time when I saw Sweeney no Todd. Because yeah. like... Me and a bunch of friends went to see Sweeney Todd, and there's like a row of like teenage boys in front of us. About five minutes into the play, because of course there's like an end endless song, same thing with Into the Woods. All of a sudden, all of them get up, and the one guy's like, I didn't know this was going to be a musical. <laughs> this sucks. Did you not see the, the trailers for Sweeney? I'm pretty sure there are musical trailers for Sweeney Todd. <laughs> But I'm glad that that didn't happen in this, aside from that one jackass with the phone. Mm -hmm. so. And this has to be said, uh, I, I have to be the the darkest sketch person. When mm -hmm. uh, the moment when the baker left his child, and I'm in, you know, there, there's something happens to his wife, and he's just like, I'm completely useless mm -hmm. now, and he just runs away. 
That's it. that's one of the inconsistent things though about the play because I don't remember him saying saying that in the stage version, but like. The whole first half, he's like so adamant about breaking the spell on his own and not allowing his wife to help him. And then suddenly he doesn't have her around anymore. He's like, he's like I relied on my wife for everything. Mm. He's like... <laughs> well, to be fair, they, there is a song where they showcase like him changing the woods, making him bolder. Actually, there's a really stupid line that they added into the, the movie, and it really contradicts even the movie, because the movie has the line, in, you know, there, it's like, you know, um, he says, you know, after they, they finally decide to um, unite, <laughs> he says, why are we always splitting up? And it's like, and you're the one splitting everyone yeah, up. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> he's the one saying, you know, oh no, the spell is on my house, I have to lift the spell by myself, I don't want nobody with me. And then he keeps saying, oh, you need to take the cow, yeah. and, and if he hadn't, like, split up his wife, maybe they would have wouldn't have had to go find the cow twice. Yeah. <laughs> and it, he's the one splitting everyone up, except for one instance where his wife is just like, okay, we, we gotta split up, we gotta do it together, mm -hmm. and together means we have to go separate ways to cover more ground. That made sense, but yeah, you're right. But yeah, I mean, it make... really contradicts <laughs> what's going on. Okay, okay. It contradicts what just happened. <laughs> I, yeah. I am I am Freddie Prince Jr. here. I'm gonna split up the gang. Gang, let's split up. <laughs> Why are we always splitting up, gang? Cause I said so. <laughs> the, 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 that's the equivalent, and mm. I, 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 yeah, it's a little bit weird. Mm. Overall, though. Yeah. Uh, though you know those nitpicks aside. Yeah, it's a yeah. good movie. It really is, and one of the more admirable ad adaptations of a Broadway musical. Because there are so many ways they could have messed it up. like, And the fact mm. that they managed to pull off what they did was, is really, you know, a good sign of things ahead. Honestly, I think Disney is only getting better at this stage. They're entering a second renaissance where a lot of their, uh, you know, uh, people may pay more attention to their uh, animated shows. And their animated, animated pictures have been doing great, but... Their live action has been slowly getting better mm -hmm. and better. And while I haven't seen Maleficent, and I know it wasn't as well received, um, the looks for Cinderella actually, you know, while I think it is overdone and I don't really think they should have done Cinderella, mm -hmm. it looks good. Mm -hmm. And from the looks of Into the Woods, like they, they managed to do Cinderella a little bit differently. From my perspective, mm -hmm. I, know, I know this is part of the play, yeah, yeah. but from right. my perspective... Um, Tomorrowland coming up looks good. I may be in the minority in this, but I'm excited for Tomorrowland. I'll give it a shot. Yeah. I mean, I expect it to be, they're trying to make it in an, another Pirates of the Caribbean type thing in terms mm. of basing movies on their rides. Right. But, but you this know, seems like it has a plot. Like, ra rather than, well, Pirates of the Caribbean had a plot, but this, this seems like it has more of a plot than, like, say, you know... It's not a haunted mansion. Mm. Or a country bears. <laughs> We have to get the band back together. So yeah, as long as it doesn't go that route, yeah. then I'll, I'll watch it. <laughs> anyway, so, so... So, yeah, yeah, definitely go see Into the Woods. Yeah. We'll uh, be doing another vlog, like, with more spoilers, and we'll, and in that and sense, we will do a more thorough compare-contrast of the movie and the musical with uh, Eric. So, Y2 Staller. Yeah, Y2 Staller. <laughs> so, look forward to that. So, until then. Until then. Into the woods! Into the woods! Into the woods and out of the woods! And I don't know the, the song. Don't! But agony. <laughs> punch, 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 punch. <laughs> I'm Zenith Rule. I am One Sat Morn. And I'm Cat C Critic. And, uh, I liked it. I liked it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. You're completely useless now. <laughs>